Hello everybody, family and friends. Sandy here again. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome to my kitchen. Um, today we are going to do a recipe that is extremely important to the Jowan family. It is uh, my mother-in-law Madeline's um, famous crepes. So we're going to make crepe batter and then I'm going to take you through actually how to uh, make a crepe and then the options along the way for you. Um, it's important to us because it's a family tradition, all right? Crepes are very French. My mother-in-law was very French. Uh, and we just love them. And uh, so when we, you know, decide to make crepes, it's a special, special day um, in our house and everybody loves them. So um, we're gonna get started. We're gonna do the batter first. Um, I am making a double batch today, so you'll see on the recipe card that I share with you uh, that uh, everything um, that I do today is, is actually doubled in proportion. Um, a single uh, uh, batch of batter makes uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of about 15 crepes in an 11 inch crepe pan. So if you make them smaller, um, of course you'll get more crepes. I don't think you'll ever <laughs> make them better, bigger than an 11 inch uh, crepe pan. Um, these pans I actually got in, in France on one of the trips we took to, took to France. Uh, so they are um, nonstick surface and you can see they're pit, pitted a little bit so that they really do a good job when it comes to uh, making sure that the crepes don't stick and when you have to flip them over, um, it's pretty easy. Um, I use this, uh, a blender. This is a pretty heavy duty blender. Any blender will do um, to do the batter in. Um, we've got, what do we have? Seven ingredients here. Um, so it's, it's not real complicated to put together. I like to start out with some wet ingredients at the bottom of the blender. Um, the recipe calls to put the flour in first, but I find that there's a tendency to, for the flour to stick at the base of the blender if I do that. So we are gonna start out with um, three cups of milk. Now the milk can be uh, right out of the fridge. It can be room temperature. Um, it can um, be whole milk. It can be skim milk or anywhere in between, one or 2%. I like to do the crepes with whole milk. Um, it gives the crepes a really good consistency and you'll find that if you have less fat in the milk, uh, the crepe batter will be a little bit thinner, so you might want to uh, up a little bit of the flour, but don't go too crazy there. Um, a pinch of salt. When the recipe says a pinch of salt, it really means a pinch of salt. So in this case, I'm going to put two pinches of salt right into the milk because um, we're doubling. And then I have the eggs. Now I have here six eggs. Two of those eggs are yolks only. So four whole eggs, two yolks for a total of uh, six eggs here. When I crack the eggs, I crack them one at a time into a small bowl to make sure that each egg is okay and, and not spoiled. I've had that happen where I've cracked them all into a bowl and got one bag of bad eggs and I had to throw all the eggs away. That's a good tip anytime that you're using eggs, a quantity of eggs. Um, do them one at a time in a separate bowl and then and then put them into the into the mix. Um, so in go our eggs. All right, so now we can put in the sugar. Now this is a half a cup of um, turbinado sugar. It's not white sugar, uh, so it's not as sweet. Uh, so it's a brown sugar, turbinado sugar. You'll find it in all of the baking aisles of the supermarkets. For this uh, crepe batter, we're going to use sugar. We're going to have them be a little bit sweet. If you want to use this recipe and have it be a savory crepe that you can use then to fill with savory ingredients, ingredients like chicken and vegetables and things like that, don't put the sugar in. Um, but for this, because we're just going to eat the crepes straight up with a little bit of uh, jam or a little bit of powdered sugar on them or even another sprinkle of the torbinado on top and just roll them and eat them. Um, 
we're good to put the sugar in. And you can use them for dessert crepes too, put chocolate, anything. So this is a real versatile starter recipe that can kick you off in a lot of different directions in terms of using and making crepes. So the sugar goes in and then we have a rounded cup each of regular flour and whole wheat flour. Um, the recipe says rounded um, and that's what I do because that's what Madeline did. Um, so I don't flatten it out, make sure I have, a, a, you know, exact cups, but I don't do, go too crazy either. Um, and so I just uh, kind of do what she says and it comes out really well. Um, Madeline didn't make too many things, but she did make great crepes. And actually Paul's uncle, uh, whose name was also Paul, he made crepes with this recipe as well. And he was a crepe making machine and he used a small crepe pan and he would just flip them out like nobody's business, come up with a big stack and plop it on the table and everybody would dig in. And uh, he, he was really great to watch making crepes. Um, okay, so the last ingredient is melted butter. So this is six tablespoons of melted butter. I just melted it in the microwave. Um, don't put it in when it's killer super hot. Um, and uh, also put it in at the end so that it doesn't um, react immediately. If your milk is really cold, um, you know, you may have a problem with the butter uh, seizing up in the batter, but uh, just put it in on top of the uh, flour and you should be fine. Uh, not have to worry about it seizing back up. So that's it. All of this goes into the blender. We are going to get this thing humming and buzz it up. So here we go. Let's see. I'll pulse it a little bit to get it started. And as you can see, right, I've got some flour that's sort of stuck to the side here. So I just take the lid off go in there with a spatula and sort of push it down so that we get all of the ingredients into the batter. And I'll just pulse it again. step is to put the batter in a bowl. Make sure your bowl is big enough to hold all that batter. And I don't know if you can see this, but the batter is really, and it's really hard for sh to show you, but the batter is frothy. Um, it should be bubbles on top. And so we're just going to pour it into the bowl. Just don't forget, you've got your eggs in there. Right, that gives it some body. Okay, so we'll just put it into this bowl. All right, and now the batter has to set up. So I'm gonna simply leave this covered in the bowl for an hour. Um, you can also put it overnight in the refrigerator. If you wanna make it, say, in the afternoon, and then easily make it in the morning. Um, just cook the crepes off. Um, you can just put it in the refrigerator and let it set there um, for up to 24 hours and you'll be fine. Uh, so we'll take a look at it. Um, it'll, it'll kind of froth up a little bit and it'll separate into layers, you'll see. And so when you uh, are ready to use it, you just have to give it a good mix especially if you leave it overnight, it'll separate out a little bit even more. Um, but it should do that. Um, it should do that. And that uh, ability to set and have all the ingredients kind of just have time to hang out together um, will make the batter have a really great consistency and yield you really good results. Um, 
So that's the batter. Uh, we will uh, let it sit for the hour and then we're gonna um, go ahead and, and make ourselves some crepes, which is, uh, which is, I guess, an art in and of itself and took me a while to learn how to do. Um, hopefully I'll be able to do it for you and, and, and share that experience and that knowledge with you, which will be fun. So we'll see you in a little bit to uh, make some crepes. Okay, everybody, it's been an hour. Let's take a look at our crepe making setup. We've got our two pans on medium heat, warming up, uh, getting ready to accept the batter. And here's our batter. It has been an hour and you can see that the batter is nice and frothy. And you'll be able to see when I go into it that it will need to be mixed a little bit. You can see the color. I just mix that frost froth right in. And as you make each crepe, you're gonna do that. But this is a beautiful batter, great consistency, and uh, ready to make some great crepes. You can see here how thick it is and how it coats. Really nice batter. And we have ourselves about a tablespoon of melted butter and a couple of plates to put the crepes on um, when they come out of the pan. So that's the setup. Now let's make some crepes. All right, so we've got our first two crepes in the pan. And the first crepes are usually the hardest. So um, if they break on the first try or something like that happens, don't worry about it. Even a seasoned crepe maker like myself will have trouble with the first crepe sometimes. Today I was pretty lucky. The first one's held up pretty good. And you can see they move around. I flip them over and they move around in the pan and there's a little color there uh, so you can see that uh, these are pretty much ready to take out so I'm going to take this one out and just flip them onto a plate and we are ready with this pan to start our second one the pans are hot you can feel the heat coming from these pans um, if they get too hot you might want to lower them a little bit but you got to play with it it's not something that's going to be perfect on your first try um, this one needs a little bit more time so maybe this pan is not quite as hot as i need it to be but let's get going with this one so we take some of the melted butter and we just wipe it around the pan so even those are though these are no stick pans you're still going to need to butter them then we're going to take, this is a half cup measure. Um, I think for this, we need a little short of a half a cup. Um, I think a half cup, a full half cup makes a crepe that's probably a little bit too thick. That's not really what we want. All right, so we're going to take the batter and we're going to pour it around. We're going to move that crepe until the batter covers. And we're going to go around, okay? And you'll see the batter will start to firm up right in the pan. And it'll start to bubble up around the edges. So we have our spatula here. This guy might be ready to go. I'm going to turn him over because I've got some batter on him that I don't want to get. Okay, and you can see here the edges are starting to bubble up. And if you run that spatula around, you see I just ripped that one, but if you wait a few minutes and you rub that, run that spatula around, we're gonna do this a couple times too that you get the hang of it, but and I'm also a little nervous doing this on camera, so bear with me. Uh, you can see that the inside of that crepe is getting ready to set up. So you flip it. flatten it out in the pan. Now I just broke this one because I'm nervous, but the next one will be better, I promise. So let's get this one out of the pan. Flip it out. Put some butter. If they break, no problem. Okay. Batter 
can mix it. Like I said, make sure you're mixing it in. Pour it in. Tilt that pan around. If a little hole doesn't want to fill, give it a little push. And just tip it until the batter starts to set up and put it down. Right, so we'll check on this guy here. Now, you notice I flipped it a couple times. Most of the time you will. Sometimes you'll be perfect and you won't have to flip it more than once um, to get it done. Um, but again, you know, we're playing, we're also playing with the heat. You're gonna make 15, 16 crepes. You'll have it down to a science by the time you get to your last one, I promise you. Um, but that's a simple process. Again, you can see me moving this around so you can tell that the uh, bottom of that crepe is moving nicely. And this one's got a way to go. So this one's a little thicker. You can see that the edges are not quite there yet. Um, but I wanna kinda show you, right, how that crepe looks. It's got a little color on the one side. Okay. And that's it. If you overcook them, you know, you're gonna know right away. You know how you're gonna know? You're gonna smell them. Um, you're gonna tell that you, you know, burnt it on one side. That's happened to me. Um, and sometimes if you overcook them, the edges will get dry and they just crumble off. So that's kind of not a big deal. But you can see the color now on this side. This guy's done. They're thin. They don't take a lot of time to whip them out. Okay, let's do one more. Again, the butter, you can hear the butter. You can hear the noise that it makes when it hits the pan. This pan is starting to get to the temperature that we need it to be at consistently. So I like it. Less than a half a cup into the pan. Use your wrist. Use your wrist. Right. Let it go. You can see there, I can almost, right? That's almost sideways. So you can tell the batter sets up really easily in that pan. These pans have edges on them. Some crepe pans that you buy might not have edges at all, um, which makes it a little bit more difficult. I like a crepe pan with an edge, okay? And you see that one came perfectly out. That one is, that's a perfect crepe right there. And when you turn it over, it has perfect color. See? All right, so this one on this side, because it was so perfect, isn't gonna take a long time to finish and set up. And again, I'm moving it so you can tell. So it's a thin pancake. It's basically what it is, right? That's all you're doing. Just let that set a minute. Now, I use two crepe pans. <laughs> you might just buy one and do them one at a time. That's okay too, obviously. Um, but crepes take a long time to make. So, uh, you know, having two pans um, is a good thing because you get through quicker that way, right? You have two pans going at once. Yep. All right, this one's starting to set up along the edges. Run your spatula. The other thing I will tell you is that you should have a very thin spatula and one that's very flexible. You can see that this thing flexes. This is a spatula I've been using forever. It's perfect for making crepes and probably even a little bit worn on the, worn on the edges because I've used it for so long. Um, but if, you're, if your spatula is too thick, it's not gonna get underneath that crepe. Um, so that's a tip I guess I can give you. Let me flip this guy over. Again, really nice. Okay, my pans are humming now. Again, here's the color that you want and the consistency you want. One more. Okay. 
give that batter a stir. I always stir it because it's got that froth on the top and then everything else underneath. You want that froth, that nice airy froth. You want that in your batter. So give it a good, nice, good stir every time you use it. And again, I usually you start it on one side, tip it, turn it, spin it. Use your wrist. Okay. Again, see that batter just sets right up. All right, now you can see this guy, I probably left him on a little bit too long, but you know, that's what it'll look like too if you, it's no big deal. It tastes actually good that way. Um, that's not too bad, but gotta get him off. All right, so that's how you make the crepes. Uh, you roll them up. This one's probably too hot, but I'm gonna give it a try. You roll it up, right? It is hot. Um, I'm gonna let it sit for a minute. There, you roll it up, and you just bite it, knead it. You can put it on a plate. You can put out some sugar, like I said. Some people like some powdered sugar, or some people like to spread a little bit of um, their favorite jelly or jam in there. Um, and these are sweet crepes. So we can also, let me also show you this. You can also fold a crepe. I'm sure you've all seen this on TV, but instead of rolling it that way, you can fold it into a triangle like so. And that's kind of the way you do it. If you're going to make a crepe Suzette, or you're going to make something with jam or that kind of thing. And then you can cut it with a knife and a fork. Um, and plate it up and, and make it look real pretty and sprinkle it with some sugar or maybe some shredded chocolate would be nice. Um, that kind of thing. And have yourself a dessert crepe or a breakfast morning crepe. Um, if you want to do a savory crepe, again, you leave the sugar out that I showed you at the beginning. Leave that out and uh, go the savory route. And, um, I don't really do savory crepes, but I'm sure you can find a good recipe online where you uh, do a savory crepe, you know, make some kind of a stuffing to put in there, roll it in there, and then uh, bake them off um, in the oven. Um, I guess how you even make enchiladas and things like that is very similar. Uh, so I'm sure if you invest in some good crepe pans, um, you can probably use uh, use them for some other things besides actually making crepes too would be interesting. Uh, so that's it. That's the crepe, crepe uh, making lesson for today. It's Madeline Jowan's um, recipe, like I said. It's been handed down uh, in the Jowan family, family for, you know, a few generations. Um, and we are happy to have this recipe in our recipe box and really happy when we're making, and especially when we're eating crepes here in the Jowan family. So um, until next time, uh, hope you're enjoying the series and, uh, and sharing time with me. Uh, <laughs> and uh, until next time, hope you're all doing well. Take care and see you later.
All right, a few last comments on the crepes. Of course, they're best if you eat them right away. Take them right from the hot pan to the table and everybody sits around uh, and eats them warm and waits for the next one and has some good conversation. That's the best way to enjoy crepes. Um, if that's not possible and you want to make a batch, you can certainly do that and save them in the fridge for during the week. They are excellent warmed up in the microwave. Um, so just quarter them and wrap them in some saran wrap and put them in a little pile and put them in the fridge. Um, they will last up to a week in the fridge. And so uh, when you're ready to have one, you just take one out, unfold it, put it on a paper plate, stick it in, in the microwave and literally warm it up for 20, 25 seconds, 30 seconds the most. Um, the crepe will be nice and hot. You can fill it with your favorite filling, roll it up and enjoy it that way uh, anytime during the week. So um, just wanted to let you know that tip. A lot of times, as you can see, that's what we do here. We'll make a batch, we'll enjoy a few fresh, and then whatever's left over, we'll wrap up and, and put in the fridge for a future, uh, future day. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed making crepes with me and uh, look forward to hearing some comments back from you uh, on how you made out with your first batch of crepes. Um, the pan that I used, by the way, is Tefal. So you might want to look that up if, uh, if you don't have pans and you're looking to invest in a set or, or one. Um, any other questions you have on making crepes, uh, please leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer you or simply call me. Uh, again, Sandy here from my recipe box. Take care, everybody, and be well.